Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance, let's watch. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. As I always say, don't use YouTube as a replacement for therapy. If you need a therapist, get one. You deserve it. Let's watch. Okay, change. I mean, I don't want you to be mad at me all day. I'm no mad. Or mind. I'm mad at you, you know, but we definitely need to talk. I'm no and I'm mind. tired of talking. I'm so tired of talking and having drama. This isn't who I am. And I've, ugh, I'll talk to you when I Okay, so it's been a couple of weeks since they aired an episode because of the Super Bowl, and I feel like it was months ago that we last saw this show. So I, I'm a little, I'm trying to remind myself what happened. And last night she I was a little intoxicated, seemingly, and was that really awful scene where she was wanting sex and he was saying, look, I want to be in a more committed relationship before I do that. And she was getting more upset. And I mean, I'm summarizing. And then she was, was that last night? Was that the night? I think so. And then she started triangulating her son and saying, if my son were to learn about how you're treating me, not having sex with me, then he would have a thing or Sadie, you know, he would, he would let you have it. I, I can't remember the exact, exact threat she was making. I don't know if it was a threat, but it seemed like she was saying that her son was going to have words or maybe even be violent with Usman or something. And Usman's like, I don't care, bring it on, you know, that kind of thing. And it escalated. And Usman almost left. And then she convinced him to come back. And then he did. And so I was hoping that Kim the next morning, because I, I think, I, I know a lot of talk is like, Us Kim is this horrible person, but I maybe it's wishful thinking, but I, I think that she has maturity to some extent and differentiation to some extent, enough anyway, to be able to look at that scene last night and be mortified. So I was hoping that this next morning she would immediately apologize for last night and just say, I was upset, I was hurt, it's totally rude of me and pressuring you to have sex with me. I'm, I'm just feeling rejected, and, and but that doesn't justify what I did. I was hoping she'd say something like that, but that's not what she's saying. What she's saying is, I just don't want the drama. And, you know, she's not directly blaming him, but she's certainly not taking responsibility. Last night, Usman finally moved into my room, which to me is a major victory. And then all of a sudden, it got really, really heated. And now this morning, the tension between us is really thick. I feel like our whole potential relationship is on ice right now. I'm so frustrated. I mean, he hasn't even kissed me yet. As usual, I totally get the feeling underneath it all. She thought that they were essentially boyfriend-girlfriend before she even landed. And I think she had good reasons to believe that. I think Usman was giving a lot of those ideas. I mean, it's before the 90 days, so presumably the cast members are like, yeah, I'm in a romantic and sexual relationship with this person, so let's start filming. But if you just look at the surface, Usman is just like, or at least if you look at 90% of the surface behaviors, he is just looking for a friend to help him with his music stuff or something. Anyway, so I get that for her, she was expecting, I think reasonably so. Like with Stephanie and Erica, when Stephanie went to Australia, it makes sense that Stephanie and Erica both would expect, well, at some point we're going to make out, <laughs> you know, it's just, that's right. I mean, isn't, and they even just probably talked about, it. I think maybe did Usman talk about it? Maybe not. Anyway, point is, is that I get that Kim is disappointed that she's like, what's happening? I, th I was under the impression that we were boyfriend, girlfriend, and he hasn't even kissed me yet. <laughs> We're, we're just hanging out like, or he's treating me like a, his, his friends are calling me super fan. I'm not super fan. I mean, I am a super fan, I think she'll admit, but I'm also her, his girlfriend, potentially his future wife. So how come he's not kissing me? I get that. But then to escalate that to pressure is, you know, not, not okay. You know, like this whole coming here and not knowing about like the sex thing. Like I had no idea you weren't gonna kiss me. I had no idea. And mm. I think it was kind of selfish to be honest. That's yeah. how I feel. Selfish, as if it's like, hey, you're withholding something from me that I deserve rather than 
do you want to kiss me, Usman? <laughs> because I would really love it if you would love to want to kiss me and then kiss me because that because I want to kiss you. Selfish. She's calling him selfish for not kissing her. That's an interesting perspective, right? I wonder if... So, you know, we could talk about entitlement and whatnot, but I think, I think more likely, given what Kim is talking about, is that she might be operating from this place of people... They don't want me. They give me love and attention and, and maybe kisses because they're obligated to do so. Not because they want to, but because they have to or because I pressure them. I mean, there certainly seems to be a theme here, and she's sober now, presumably, and is still in that mindset. So that either means she was raised to feel like people aren't going to like... Because, you know, it, if you're Kim, you're like, well, he obviously doesn't want to kiss me because he would if he wanted to because I'm here and it would be so easy for him to kiss me. It's it's not a huge commitment. So he must not want to. So why wouldn't she make that conclusion? Why would she say you're being selfish by not kissing me? I don't know. Maybe we'll see some more here. So do you think it's right for me to kiss you and to have sex with you when we are not in a relationship? How does that look like? I mean, it's it's part of being in a relationship, though. It's part of, like, finding out. So you are know? we in a relationship? It's just two different... No, we're not in a... So that's just a point. So Usman is either confused or I don't understand him or he's playing a game, which is he doesn't really want to address this for whatever reason. We could speculate as to why, but, you know, you think that he... if he, So if he liked her, you would think he would say... Look, I like you. I want to kiss you. I want to have sex with you, but I I want to just take a little slow. Can we take it? Slow? You know, something like that. Instead, he like twists the conversation into this catch twenty two for her. She, he's like, "Do you think it's right to kiss and have sex if you're not in a relationship?" And then, but then he says, "In order to be in a you know," and of course Kim says, "Well, in order to be in a relationship, you have to kiss and." So, yeah, we're not in a relationship because you haven't kissed me yet. We're just, like, people that know each other. So, it's, you know, I don't know. Let's see how this goes. Listen, if we leave here and I'm not in a relationship with you, I'm done. Like, I'm dead serious. I'm done. I'll start dating at home. I'm not going to just be your friend. I'm not going to, I'm just not going to do it. So, that makes sense. Absolutely. And if, uh, I'm sure everyone would agree. Yeah, Kim, if things don't work out with Usman... Why would you string it along? I mean, if he doesn't indicate either, you know, if you go home without some romance happening, then he either doesn't like you or the two of you were so incompatible that any chance was ruined while you visited. So why are you changing? Going to do it. Why are you changing? Because I love you, Usman, and I'm not going to sit here and beg some dude to have sex with me, beg some dude to kiss me, and then go home and not have any answers and just be your friend after all these weeks we've spent together here? No more friendship, no, no talk. I'll be done. Kim Bali is one of my best friends right now because we talk every day. Okay, so let's allow for that possibility that for Usman... He thinks of Kim as more of a friend and enjoys talking with her and likes her support. So he doesn't, he's not super interested or he's not desperate to take it to the next level because he likes their friendship. I don't know. Do you think that's true? Let me know in the comments because I, I can't tell. Uh, but I don't think like, you Look how you're talking about my son. You are telling me that I should respect your son. I would definitely respect your son. I hope so. I will. Not only your son, I respect everybody. You know me. You think yelling at me is being respectful? So she either has a very limited understanding of what happened last night, or she stands by what she was saying. So she's continue and so we're seeing a very similar with situation with Lisa where Lisa would explode in an unfair way. They would have a conversation about it afterwards, and the narrative that Usman was completely to blame would continue, which is, it's not as severe this time, but it's definitely in that direction. I mean, like I said, Kim could absolutely say, 
look, I'm just hurt. You know, it seems like you don't really like me. And I'm going to stop asking for you to kiss me or have sex with me and just know that I'm here. And if you want to engage with me, uh, I, you know, given how I feel right now, I'm, I'm open to it. But if you don't approach me romantically in the next few days, then we're done. And that makes me sad. You could say that 100%. And for most people in romantic relationships who are interested in that kind of thing, they will take that invitation. <laughs> you know, Usman is not a shy person, right? So now he does have some uh, boundaries around like when you can have sex, but certainly kissing, but maybe kissing is also not on the table. But he's certainly not providing a roadmap of how to get to those you know, milestones. He's certainly not saying, okay, here's what we need to do. We need to get to know each other better. Give me a few more. Like he's not, he doesn't say anything long. anyway. So she could certainly say that, but she's saying that he's to blame for their conversation about her son. From my memory, low those tw two weeks ago, <laughs> that she was saying, my son is going to get you because of the way you're treating me right now, because you're not having sex with me when I demand it. <laughs> and, and he was like, what? Uh, uh, now I, I feel like you're threatening me? And, you know, he, he raised his voice, not terribly so, defended himself. And so now her narrative is that he was the aggressor. He was the wrong one. But I need you okay. to really either think about it. Really? Or okay, it. okay. Yeah. I'll talk to you. Okay. What else? What do you want, want you. from... You got me. I don't got you. You got me. I don't got you. You got me. No, I don't got... So, yeah, I mean, maybe Usman, from his culture, this all makes sense, which I will absolutely allow space for, but... If you're Kim, you're like, I I got you? Like, I don't understand. You haven't touched me. <laughs> You've held my hand. You've invited me to your work. And we went shopping, but you haven't kissed me. And you, I don't I don't see any actual romantic gestures towards me. So I don't understand what's happening. Okay. We're having sex tonight. No, we're not. We are. Really? Yeah. So, like, we're going to have sex. We're having sex tonight. Okay, that took a turn. Um, okay. So, I just didn't seem like it was ever going to happen. Now, it's like, okay, well, they have sex. And then what does that mean? Does that mean they're in a relationship now? Does that mean they're almost engaged, essentially, in Usman's mind? Um, will they live happily ever after? Let's watch. Really though? Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> despite the issue we had last night, I don't want the drama of this sex to be the end of us. So if we are going to be in this, I need to take step. I mean, you would hope that he would say, I want to do this and I'm just moving my timeline ahead a little bit. Instead, it's I don't want this to end, so I feel coerced into having sex with her. I mean, I don't think he feels legit coerced because I think he, I don't know, but I'm guessing he feels like he has the power to say no in this situation. But I don't know. It's just, it's just, now who knows? Maybe underneath it all, he's totally in like with her and is ready to make this happen. But I don't know. It's just oh, confusing. I, it's not like this, it's like... Okay, arm. African way. I'm telling you. African way. I was shocked as hell when Usman said he was going to have sex with me tonight. So now I'm like all excited and nervous. And does this mean that after we have sex, it means I'm in a relationship with Mara? Is he testing out the goods before he buys the product? I don't... I mean, there's just so many things about the way this is playing. But I don't know. It's like, okay, if you like someone and you want to be with them, then you get excited about this, for sure. But there's, it does have a fan vibe, right? Like, ee, like a groupy vibe to it. And, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that as an element. If you are a fan and you also legit want to have a relationship with someone, 
but I don't know. There's just something about it that just doesn't feel uh, mutually satisfying where two people are like, oh, my God, I want to be with you. Let's move down the road together instead of you yanking me into a space that I don't want to be and not really caring about how like that's the other thing i guess is like she should say in this moment are you sure or are you just doing this because you're worried i'm going to reject you or because i don't want this to be like that oh no prepare and make sure that your bag is strong because we are spending it be like oh. Boom. but when i say i want an answer if we're going to be in a relationship or not by the end of our trip in zanzibar i mean it and he and i really think he knows i mean it now Maybe you didn't know at first, but... Uh, the language is like, I put my foot down and now he's going to have sex with me. He better have... I mean, it's just not exactly what she's saying, but it's in that ballpark. And... Uh, I mean, relationships starts... You know, a lot of relationships will start under various circumstances. So uh, they're. I think they're both voluntarily heading into this, I think. And so each to their own. But yeah, he knows now. I drew the line in the sand. I mean, <laughs> I drew the line. It, but I don't know. I guess we'll just have to, just have to wait and see because post-sex, are they going to be okay and they'll be happily ever after? Or is this just the beginning of some really awful dynamic? I don't know. I do love you though. I know. Yay, I won. You won? <laughs> I won. Are you sure? I won. I won the fight. I won. I win. I get what I want regardless of what you want. I made you submit to my will. I mean, it's the mindset. And where would that come from? Like I said, is it this assumption that no one will ever love her unless she wins? over them. I mean, a lot of people have that mindset based on their past. Is it the fan mentality that just has been so strong in her mind with Michael Jackson that she has transferred to Usman in this really problematic way? Is it playful talk? I don't know. Whatever I would do with my business, like my concert, I would be around ladies. As far as I'm not in relationship with them, She's okay. I'm fine. It's not every lady you understand that. Kimbali does. That sounds to me more like someone that can be an assistant, not someone that you can be in a relationship with. I mean, he's not wrong. So, on one hand, it's true that what Usman is saying is like, you know, she's very loyal. I love her because she's very loyal and she doesn't get in the way of my work and she doesn't get jealous of the women that I interact with at work. And so, yeah, that does kind of sound like an assistant, but I could also see, because it's a big question mark, you know, is Usman genuinely in like with Kim? It's possible, it doesn't seem likely given the evidence, but it's possible, and it's possible that a, a big part of his compatibility that he, you know, predicts with Kim has to do with her not caring about those things, so, and supporting it even. So, I don't know. Uh, let's see what happens. Yes! Hey. Is this what you're wearing to bed? Yeah. Yeah? I'm dying. I'll talk very briefly about the history of colonialism. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing because I, I'm not going to briefly talk about this, or I'm not going to be able to concisely discuss it briefly. And the history in the United States of treating black people like they were animals or objects or possessions or things that you can do whatever you want to with. We could talk about the dehumanization of groups of people, particularly by white European descendants in the United States and your white Europeans in Europe, and how this is reminiscent of that. 
we'd have to ask Usman how he feels if he's like, nah, I feel fine. I, I don't feel exploited or coerced or dehumanized or objectified. I'm fine. I'm totally fine. I'm in control. I, I'm doing this voluntarily. I, I was going to do it anyway. I just sort of moved it. So I'll just say that. Wait, wait. Oh, God. Oh, what are you going to do? Wait, are you going to strip for me? Do I need some money? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> You're so funny. Uh-huh. You're so, you have to take the chain off, though. Where have you been for eight days? <laughs> Today's going to be the day that you party. Because I pronounce you <laughs> boyfriend and girlfriend. All right. So was he playing hard to get? Was he just wanting to get to know her better? Was what? <laughs> I mean, it just looked like this was not likely to happen. How does he feel about it now? Is he okay with it? I guess time might tell. I kind of have sex with you. Wait, you didn't decisions. tell me that. You didn't tell me I that. I do. That's why I'm having the sex with you. You never told me that. That's why we're having the sex You tonight. are like, really? Yeah. I made it. Yeah. Really? You're a hardworking person. <laughs> no, really, like yeah, seriously. you do. I made it. It's that language of like, you know, so on one hand, it's fine that she is like, Okay, what do I say? When you really like someone and you're not sure if they like you, you'll do a lot, you know, ethical, moral things, you know, within reason to try to get them to like you, right? And when they finally show that they like you, you're like, yes, I made it, I guess. Is that what people say? But there's just this consistent approach or mindset that she has. Maybe it's playful. I don't know. Uh, or the other thing that I've been talking about is, does Kimberly believe that no one would like her unless she sort of games the system or pushes? You know, this, this idea, because in that moment, you wouldn't say that Kimberly feels very special or that she's very lovable or something because if you thought well yeah i mean i'm a lovable attractive person so of course i made it or i don't know that's narcissistic of course anyway i don't know that a lot for me and how i see this depends on what ultimately happens with them and how usman feels about this whole thing which i can't really tell you are so funny <laughs> i have to ask you what made you decide now I make you to be my girlfriend even before this trip. But I want to know how you are in person. Mm -hmm. And now, for every reason, I think you are the one. Loyalty, supportive, patient, and real love. Okay. So, that sounds legit. And that with Lisa, he could have said, oh, I went too fast. And that, I thought Lisa was really nice. And then when we were in person, she was not really nice, and then it was hard to extract myself, so I don't want to commit to something. And so I'm gonna make sure this time that things don't trigger her. I'll bring her along work. Will she get triggered by that? I will, I will draw boundaries. Will she stick around with that? So, okay, maybe. Maybe this is legit. So for that reason, I choose it to be my girlfriend, Kimbali. That's so crazy. I'm gonna call you Queen Kimbali from now on. That's so you're you officially Queen Kimbali. That's crazy. Yeah. And for that, I'm Soldier Boy's for girlfriend. That, I'm for Soldier Boy's girlfriend. That's so. So it's just that language. Like, I'm just trying to think, and maybe Usman loves that kind of thing. I could see him being into it. But, you know, if my wife, for example, was like, I'm Dr. Kirk Honda's wife. I'm Dr. Kirk Honda's wife. Like, I'd be like, stop it. <laughs> like, I'm a human being. I'm not. I mean, that's a really weird thing to say. I, it's Anyway, my point is, is that it's just in line with all the other things that came. Now, maybe over time, she will calm down a little bit and be, be comfortable and feel like it's real, if it's real, and start to not see him as a celebrity and more as a human being. Um, but, you know, maybe Usman wants that. Maybe Usman wants her to be a pseudo groupie because it makes him feel good. I don't know. <laughs> just, they're just, just interesting things that we're seeing. I don't think we've ever seen this, right? We, On this show, we've never seen someone who 
was, you know, semi groupy ish, right? I don't think we've ever seen that. This is so crazy. Oh, okay. Come in. <laughs> Come in. Come in. <laughs> All right, well, if you haven't become a patron of the podcast, you can do so now by clicking the link below or going to patreon.com. When you become a patron of the podcast, you are literally giving me the ability to do these things. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do these things if it weren't for people signing up to become a patron. And there's always people canceling, so we always kind of need a new, fresh group every month to keep this you know, train moving down the tracks. So thank you for those of you who have become a patron. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.